Here I'll give you five data validation examples, and by going through these examples, I'm going to show you how to create your own custom data validation rules in Excel. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. Now, if you don't know what data validation is, it simply allows you to control what a user enters into a cell. You can prevent them from entering text or numbers, say you can only enter something three characters long, you can do all sorts of things, you can limit the date range, but this tutorial assumes that you do have some sort of basic knowledge of that. After the very first example here, I'm going to go into custom data validation rules. And that's what makes data validation so powerful, is saying I only want a unique list of text or a unique list of numbers, or don't put spaces in, or the cell has to start with these three characters. That type of thing is what allows data validation to make your spreadsheet really powerful. So first of all, data validation is on the data tab, this little button right here, data validation. However, throughout this tutorial, I'm going to be accessing it using Alt-D-L. So Alt-D-L, you get to this window. Now, the first example, let's just prevent what a user can enter into a cell. Very simple and often desired. So here we have the status of some projects. These are just addresses. And now let's add some status values. So select the desired cell, or in this case, you could select all of the cells that you want to add this feature to. Hit Alt-D-L. On the Settings tab, go to Allow, List, and then type in whatever you want to type in here, whatever the user can select. Let's keep it simple, in progress completed. For this example, for the lists, you only type in the word and then a comma and then the next word. It's as simple as that. Hit OK. And now select the cell, hit the drop down arrow, click in progress, or you can do completed, and it's very simple. And you see if a user tries to enter text, you get this error message. The value doesn't match the data validation restrictions defined for this cell. Perfect. And you can see it added the data validation to all of the cells that we selected. You do not have to do it individually. That will take forever. I wanted to give you a simple example right here so you could get a feel for data validation in case you're not used to it. But now let's move on to the good stuff. From here on out, it's all going to be custom data validation. So here we want to limit the total amount that can be entered into a range. Let's say you have a budget. Here you're going to put the amounts for the budget and it can't exceed a certain amount. Let's just say 10,000. Now let's go to data validation real quick just to look at something. Here under allow, we've got a lot of options. Whole number, decimal, list, date, time, text length. That's all pretty straightforward. You can kind of understand what it is or figure it out when you select it. But down here in custom, this is where you can enter a custom formula right here. The formula simply has to evaluate to true or false. That's all that we need. Data validation just needs to know. Can something be entered into a cell? Yes or no. That's the whole premise of formulas. And after the next few examples, you should have a better understanding of how that works. So in this case, what we want to do is we want to limit the amount entered into these cells by this value here. Well, seems complex, right? It's very, very simple. What function adds up all these values? The sum function. OK, now we've got a sum. Let's enter some numbers just to make it a bit easier to see. All right, and what do we want to do? We want to make sure that that sum is less than or equal to the maximum amount. And all you do is input a comparison operator after the sum function. That's going to make it so that the cell will evaluate to true or false. So less than or equal to, and select the cell. Enter, and you can see it's true. Now let's add a number that will make it exactly 10,000, no problem and over budget, false. So all we did, we made a very simple function to add 
a range of numbers together. Then we used a comparison operator to check if all of these values summed together is less than or equal to this value here. Now, once we have the formula, one very important thing to make sure. When you're doing a data validation on a list like this, we have to apply the data validation to every cell in the list. And, as you may know, working with formulas and functions, cell references can be absolute or relative. That means that they will change. So if I were to copy this formula and put it into data validation right now, every cell reference would move down one for each cell farther down in the list. So let me just show you what that'll look like, because this causes a lot of problems for people. Copy this. Go ahead and delete this guy. Now let's select these cells. Alt-DL. Go to Custom. Input the formula. Hit OK. Now let's go down to this cell right here. Select this cell and hit Alt-DL. It'll show you the data validation that applies to it. And you can see we have a problem. The maximum value is now pointed to cell D4, which is this cell right here. The sum is from B5 to B9, which doesn't make sense. B5 to B9. That's not our list. So everything moved down 2 because it is 2 from the top of the list of numbers to which we applied the data validation. That may seem confusing. But the more that you work with this, and the more times you mess this up, the more you'll start to understand it. The point of this is that we need to make these cell references absolute. Let's use a keyboard shortcut we learned in another tutorial, F4. It's going to put dollar signs in front of the column and row references. Then let's do it again for D2. Hit F4 after you've selected it. Now let's copy this formula. Select the cells for data validation, Alt-D-L, Settings tab, Custom, and the formula. Let's erase this guy right here and paste in the one we just created. Hit OK. Now, if we go down here to this cell, hit Alt-D-L, you can see that it has not changed. The max value is still at cell D2. And the range for the list of numbers is still B3 to B7, which is exactly what we want. Now let's enter an amount to push it over the top. And we get an error. It goes against our data validation rules. Perfect. So now we must enter values that will put it under the total amount. Let's give ourselves a little bit more for beer, maybe 2,500, nah, 2,000. Perfect. And we can't spend even $1 more on the beer. Nope. <laughs> okay, so that's just a little fun. Now let's move to the next example. We're going to do a unique list of numbers. So here I'm going to input some numbers and I want to make sure that they do not repeat themselves. So we're going to do a data validation custom formula. We want to create that formula in the worksheet just like in the last example. I didn't mention this before, but it's much, 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 much easier to complete your formula out here in the worksheet than within this data validation window. So always make your formula, especially if it's complex, Actually, no. No matter what, always make your formula out in the worksheet. It's going to reduce errors dramatically. So what do we need here? We use the AND function to return a true or false value based on the logical inputs. The first thing we want to check is, is the value a number? So we use the isNumber function for that. Select the cell that we want to check to make sure it is a number. We're not going to select the entire range here. So we select the very first cell in the list close parentheses, comma. Now the next thing that we want to check is, does the number appear in our list? And we can use the COUNTIF function to count how many times it appears in the list and then compare that to 1. So COUNTIF 
range, we select the entire range here. And remember, any time that you're going to select a range in data validation like this, you want to make that range reference absolute. So we can hit F4 and make that absolute, put the dollar signs in front of it, comma. The next thing we want is the criteria. Make sure to select the very first cell in the range once again. This needs to stay relative. Do not make it absolute because it has to update with every cell in the list. So when we copy it down for data validation, it needs to apply to A2, then A3, then A4, then A5, etc. So we close the parentheses for count if. Then once we have the count, which tells you how many times it appears within the range, you need to check to see if it appears less than or equal to 1. This part right here is what makes the count if function into a logical formula that will return true or false. We only want the number to appear once in the list, so that's why it's less than or equal to 1. Now we close parentheses on the AND function. So we're checking on two things. If the cell is a number, the first cell in the range is what we use as the input here. And then we want to count how many times the value in the first cell in the range or list appears within the entire list. Then we put a less than or equal to sign to make sure it will appear less than or equal to one time in the list. Hit enter. And it's good practice to test it out. Notice that it says false already, which might make you think data validation won't work, but don't worry about that. It's got blanks right now, and data validation is usually pretty good at dealing with that. So 1, 2, 3, no problem. 2, 2, 2, no problem. 1, 2, 3, true becomes false. Let's erase that list. Now, once you verify that the formula works, make sure to copy it. Go to your list over here, select all the cells in the list or range, hit Alt-DL under Allow, go to Custom, and input the formula. Don't do anything, don't hit any arrow keys, <laughs> nothing else, just hit OK. Now let's test it out, 1, 2, 3, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, 1, 2, 3. Problem, data validation will not let you do that. Now let's test it with some text. Red data validation will not let you do that. So that's great. Now we've got a unique list of only numbers. Now let's move to the next example. It's going to be very similar to this last one, but it'll help you start to get used to the relative and absolute cell references. So unique values in a range. This is basically almost the same as the last one, except for we don't need to check for numbers. So we're going to use the count if function once again, and that's going to count how many times this value appears in the list. Remember, for the first argument, the range, we select the entire list. What do we have to do? We have to make it absolute. Put those dollar signs in there. For the criteria, the very first cell of the range or list, close parentheses. Now remember, you have to, when using the count if function, use a comparison operator after it in order to make it evaluate to true or false. Otherwise, right now, it just appears as 0. OK, cool. And then it's just going to give you the count after that. So put that comparison operator in there. How many times do we want to allow this to end up in the range? Well, it can either appear 0 times or once, but never more than once. Once you have the formula, copy it. Remember, if you don't know the formula is correct, do verify it in the cell. Once you're satisfied, let's remove the values and apply data validation. Select the cells to which we want to apply the data validation. Hit Alt-DL. Remember, custom. Paste in the formula. All good. Red. Nope. But this time, we can enter numbers just not twice. Now here I want to show you one interesting thing. Let's go back to these cells for data validation. Alt-DL. Let's go to the error alert. Now let's make something that's a little bit easier for the user to understand what went wrong. So stop. Let's make the title. Invalid value. Error message. Duplicate 
value. So now, when someone tries to enter the same value twice, they see invalid value, duplicate value. So you can put the reason that they failed the data validation so they better understand what's going on. Now let's move to the very last example. The purpose of this is just to give you a more complex formula or one that might seem more complex. So let's do a custom data validation formula that says everything has to start with ASC in the cell. So this is okay, ASC, whatever. That's not, that's not. It has to start with ASC. So what we want to do here is use a text manipulation formula. And this tends to scare people a little bit, but this will be an easy example just to show you that you can do basically anything with data validation so long as the formula evaluates to true or false. Equals left, the cell where we want to get the text, comma, how many characters do we want to get? Well, ASC is only three characters long, so I want to get that from the front of the cell. So three characters, close parentheses. Now this left function returns the first three characters of the cell. So if I do ASC123, it returns ASC. Now how do we get a function that returns something like this to return true or false? Remember what we did with COUNTIF? You simply put a comparison operator after it, this time the equal sign. And what do we want the value, the output of this function to equal? ASC. In this case, you do need to put quotation marks around it because it is text. So ASC. Now it's true, now it's false. So you can see you can use pretty much any function, any formula for data validation so long as it evaluates to true or false. And when you use the comparison operator here with text, surround it with double quotation marks. And now since we're not worried about comparing this value to all the other values in the list, we don't have to put a range in there, we don't have to make it absolute, or relative or anything like that. We don't have to change it around. We can just leave it a very simple formula like this. A2, because when we copy this down to all the cells that we want to apply data validation to, it will update accordingly. So we leave it like this, nice, simple, easy. Copy the formula, select the cells that you want to apply data validation to, hit Alt-DL. Let's go to the Settings tab, Allow, Custom, Formula, Paste it in there, okie dokie. Now let's clear this and enter a value. One, two, three, nope. ASC, one, two, three, yep. One, two, three, nope. Let's do some dashes. Perfect. So now as long as it starts with ASC, we are good to go. Now this tutorial might have seemed slightly repetitive, but I believe that's a very good way to kind of beat into your brain how you do the absolute versus relative cell references because some of these examples like this one over here, it can get kind of confusing to think about which one needs to be relative, which one needs to be absolute, does this need to be a range or a cell or how do you do this and then don't forget the comparison operator over here. So basically do it a bunch of times and keep doing it again and again and then it will start to become easy and second nature. The hardest thing I think to remember is just which cells to make absolute versus relative. And though it may seem simple right now in this example, when you're in the middle of a very stressful work day, it's easy to forget. So that's it for this tutorial on five data validation examples in Excel and how you can apply that to your spreadsheet. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.